welcome back. It is still the morning brief right here on Channels Television. And we are saying that we're still in a celebratory mood, celebrating our Muslim brothers and sisters. So it's still Eid al Fitri, and it is still a public holiday, which means the celebration continues. But to tell us more about what the celebration is, what people should be expected to do even after the celebration, is Dr. Kasim Akinriti. He's a deputy director, digital media, Voice of Nigeria, and also the former chairman, NUJ Lagos Chamber. He's right here in the studio with us. Thank you very much for joining us Thank on the morning much. brief. Yeah. Lagos chapter, actually, NUJ Lagos chapter. Kansi. Well done, and happy <laughs> celebration to you. Thank you so much. But let's talk about the lessons from this celebration and um, what it should be for leaders in Nigeria, how it should affect them as they govern this country. Uh, thank you so much. Um, the 30 days uh, of fasting during the month of Ramadan um, is you know, a lot of what we refer to as a spiritual rebirth, a period in which um, we've, got, we've gone through self discipline, uh, self restraint, um, you know, sharing love with one another, and caring you know, um, at its best. And more importantly, is for us to know that. Uh, in serving God, you know, we also much, uh, you know, uh, ensure that uh, humanity is one. And Ramadan fast is also a period in which, you know, everyone comes together. You know, the bond of uh, communalism is always there at that point in time. And that is the strength in the unity in which everybody, you know, propels, you know, towards Almighty God, Almighty Allah. And so for individuals, or even for governments, is to see how these um, lessons of sacrifice, of self-restraint, would you know, endure throughout um, you know, the rest of the month, or the rest of the months. Because one month out of 12, you know, obviously you have gone through a lot of uh, things at that period. Mm -hmm. Sustaining this shouldn't be a much problem for, for all of us. And, but if you decided to go back you know, to all those the old ways, that would be very, very bad. For governments, yes, we should also know that um, we should keep hope alive. We should also have a spirit of self-restraint, self-discipline in all spheres. For the individuals too, we should also know that, yes, this is also a period to look back and see how well we can maintain ourselves to be more righteous, to be more dutiful, and of course, to also love one another. Because the period in which we share with everyone, what you have, the little you have, you share with everyone, which means for government, whatever it's meant for the people, let's share it across to the people, let people enjoy it. Uh, for individuals, don't hold on to what does not belong to you, you know, unnecessarily. If you have something that is meant for people, please share with the people, let people have and enjoy their comfort. And so that is the lessons we have gone through in, in the last 30, 30 days. And it is expected that it should endure. But if it doesn't, I think it is too bad for, for all of us. Well, uh, it's a very vital point you make, really. And I think this has been reiterated time and again, such that what we practice and preach in the faith, mm. uh, they translate into our everyday lives. But there's, a, there's an elephant in the room, and I just want you to clear this before we move on to other issues. So uh, two days, well, it was three days, but we understand that the first day, as I'm talking about public holiday, uh, was not, I mean, we didn't quite get the timing right, but two days now. So what happens on the first day and what happens on the second day of Eid al-Fitri? We know that there's a Tekabir uh, prayers yesterday yes. and uh, the Zakat al-Fitri and the rest on the first day. So what happens on the second day? So people understand uh, this whole process. Well, it's just the continuation of the celebration. You know, after um, probably the going to the Eid for the celebration. So thank God for 30 days uh, on the fast that we've had. You know, the, the following is just for you to take a good rest, bring, you know, come, come together with your family, visit friends, and move around, you know, go to some, have more, you know, relax. And then um, continue also to praise Almighty, Almighty God, Almighty Allah. And uh, you see, in fact, some use even that day to start another six days of fast, which okay. is recommended. It is not compulsory, though, 
But if you fast for six days, you know, after Ramadan, it's also rewarding. It's as if you have fasted for the, for the whole year. And so some could use that, you know, uh, that day of, of, of uh, you know, uh, to start, you know, the, the following six, uh, six days of uh, fasting, which is subjugatory. It is not compulsory. I need, I need to stress that. But if you also want to, you know, seek the face of Almighty Allah, you also want to get more blessings, you know, throughout the year, then of course you can do that. But generally, you know, for, for children, the, the following day is also a period in which, you know, you take your, 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 your family around, you know, children are going to be extremely happy, you know, going to amusement parks, visiting friends and, you know, eating and wine and dining at that point in time. It's just a day for us, all of us to relax, also to, also, to also reflect mm. on what we have gone through in the last 30 days and how well can we sustain the gains, the momentum of uh, self-restraint and self-discipline. That reflection is a uh, concern when it comes to our leaders. Uh, when Absolutely. we bring issues like this to the national platform, mm -hmm. I want to talk about leadership because we see that time and again, especially during this electoral cycle, we can't stop talking about it, they stoke our fault lines with borders around religion, ethnicity, and all of that. And this is the season where you say we should reflect on all of this. Now, what can leaders themselves begin to see and do differently so that they will have a bit of conscience to know that we are one nation rather than, you know, whenever we have uh, elections especially, we begin to see this division. In the spirit of Ramadan, in the spirit of Idel Fitri, what should we be telling these leaders to begin to look from the lessons and the life of the Holy Prophet to imbibe so that when this cycle comes, we don't go through that experience we always go through every four years. I think first of all, it is instructive to note that um, the, the period around Adai is a period of unity in which everybody, everyone comes together. So the, the spirit of communalism, that we all come together to do things together, irrespective of race, gender, sex, or thereabout, should remain with us. And leaders who are also using the fault lines to always, you know, divide our people should also realize that, that at the point, during the month of Ramadan, nobody cares where you come from, right? Nobody, nobody's also interested in your future status. What everyone is interested in is that we are all coming together to worship Almighty Allah, to pray to Him, uh, to pray, pray, pray to Him, and to, you know, to ask forgiveness and to do so many things together. And so at the end of the day, that's what we are saying, we also need to governize this opportunity so that use it appropriately you know, for the progress of the people. Now, leaders should realize that you know, after election, election is over, when it comes to re-governance. So what are the indices for good governance? We should all look at it and see how well that can really work for the good of the people. Because even religion itself is about humanity, it's just about caring, it's just about love, loving one another. So, and Ramadan fast has also come to, you know, also lift that spirit up. That's how we said, that 30 days of spiritual rebirth, should, we, we have renewed our spirits to do good things. Uh, we have renewed our spirits to follow, you know, the dictates of Almighty Allah. And so that should carry us on throughout the year and then and, 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 and our entire life. So, so does it mean so, some of these it, leaders, sorry for cutting it, does it mean some of these leaders don't imbibe this enough? No, no, it, it, it is. It's, it, because this act, is an every year ritual. Absolutely, both absolutely. Both Christians it, and Muslim alike. Yes, it is quite hypocritical that at that point, that 30 days is just like almost like, like a magic for everyone. And everybody comes together to do that what is good. But thereafter, people just, you know, slip back to all those you know, fault lines, all those you know, things, everybody will know that that's not too good for us. And so the, the point we should ask ourselves is, why, why, why are we going through all this? If after 30 days, yes, it's a commandment for Almighty Allah, which is quite fine. But command, that commandment is to stay with all of us so that we can all enjoy good life. If you are a politician and you have promised to deliver good governance to the people, you must ensure that you deliver. Because even that 30, during that 30 days, you see a lot of things that you are doing for the people. But that shouldn't stop you. You know, it, is, it, it, should, it should go around the entire, you know, gamut of life. 
And so when we keep repeating these rhetorics every now and then, it keeps, it's, it's, it's almost, it's, 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 it's almost a, a surprise to quite some of us that, look, we will restate all these ethos. We will go back to it at the end of the day, doing what is not good. So something is definitely wrong with us mm. as human beings. And that is why we, need, we need, also need to check ourselves. You know, when people want to do anything to divide, when they want to divide, you know, uh, citizens, it's also useful, it's easy for them to use the fault lines of religion. But religion, in the, in its sense, also, you know, is telling us that we should all come together as one and do things together. Mm. So when, when, when it's appropriate for them, it's easy for them to preach one thing. And when it's appropriate, they also need to preach another thing. But I think we could extricate ourselves from these, you know, unnecessary fault lines if we stick to the dictates of is what Islam says. Well, Dr. Kerry, because we yeah. will be, at the end of the day, we'll be accountable. That is one thing leaders should know. You'll be accountable to, the, uh, to Almighty Allah on what you have done to the people. That is very instructive. Talking about collectively building Nigeria, I mm. know it should start from as little as when a child is born mm. into adulthood. But yeah. for kids in Islam, you mentioned how happy kids are mm. celebrating this season. But today, I actually know the essence of the season because I know that Muslim children start half day fast, but mm. that begins at the age of seven to eight. And then sure. in puberty, they can now do the full day. Yeah. So, as little as from one, two, three, four, before they seven mm. what are the teachings they get to ensure that they also are part of this I mean this will help them in their uh, as they grow obviously no, yeah we are, we are also we are children <laughs> in those days we watch what our fathers our parents are doing we, we join them you know, because it's always a fun uh, as a little kid to join your parents when they are doing the early morning and um, take the early morning meal and then when you know, they are also, you know, uh, in, in the evening when they are having um, the, the meal too, you know, the, what we call the iftar, you are always happy with it. And you grow with that culture, you know, of togetherness, when you see everybody sitting together, doing things together. So, and that's, that spirit of togetherness is built up right from, you know, uh, right, right, right from uh, early age until you get to puberty. And that's why, it's, you know, we also we have, we have sustained that good we have uh, it also imbibed that good teachings of islam up to where we are now and at, at, at every point in which we in which i as a person i'm just exactly where i've served the opportunity to lead the people i've always you know used this in the, the, the spirit of uh, you know togetherness the spirit of unity the spirit of uh, uh, care love have been part and parcel of my life and those who had the opportunity of seeing me leading them, I've also seen how well I've been able to, you know, I mean, um, uh, show, demonstrate this in my own lifetime. And that is the essence of what Islam teaches, you know, young children. And as soon as you are growing up, you know, the, the, the day of the festivities, for example, we all move around family houses, you know, friends, you know, get one or two things, and you see, the other person giving us money, you know, and we are happy. And, and that's also tells us that look, there is there is there is more to sharing with people, and there is also more to caring for the people, loving the people. That is the teachings of Islam to younger children, mm -hmm. and that to be sustained up to the up to poverty. Well, there's this question I'll need to definitely ask you because of your background as a journalist yeah. I mean, you've had decades of experience and i don't think it would be fair uh, to not delve into a little bit of that but the digital aspect yeah. is what i want to focus on because i i know that social media is big now whether you like it or not <laughs> you cannot help it you have to find a way to either uh you know innovate or become a dinosaur but i know that there are religious uh, tenets that yeah. guide the use of social media, uh, posting pictures, for example, the it's, kinds of pictures you can put up, yeah. the kind of content you can put up, mm -hmm. the kind of things you have to, you can say how to address people and the rest. So I'd like you to give us an insight. And I'm saying this for the young and the old as well. Yes. Everyone is on the social media space. They call it Obas and just internet these days. <laughs> uh, so speak to us about the, uh, the tenets, how people should approach 
digital media, social media use from the religious angle? Yeah, I think generally um, the caution is the first word. And you have to be extremely um, very careful of what you post or what you discuss on social media. And uh, Islam generally uh, abhors flippancy, saying what is not truth, what is not the truth, or, 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 or what they call portraying falsehood, mm. which are all the big things that people do on the, on the social media today. Because what is not the truth? If you spread falsehood, Islam abhors it, and there's a punishment for that. Oh, really? Yes, and so people, yes, and people must understand that. And in these days, when people don't even care about humanity, and they post just anything that injures, you know, the feelings of other person, Islam also abhors that. Because once, what you need, what you need to do every mother is to make everyone happy. Once you are happy, and I'm also happy, Islam encourages that. Don't also post, you know, nudity mm. as what is do, what's being done today in social media space. Islam does not also allow that. And what are the and punishments? Because you talked about the punishment. Is and it a spiritual punishment or like a physical punishment? No, no, there, 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 are, there, are, there are, for example, on every Friday, there are three, there are say, about three things that we talked about when you want to close the sermon on Friday. That um, do, not, do not be part of those that will destabilize the society. Hmm? And you must do good and you must uphold the sanctity of the family, the court of family, you must not cut it. These are prescribed, these are things that do every Friday, every Friday sermon, these are being repeatedly turned because the punishment for it is both in this life and the hereafter. Right. Exactly, for example, in Arab countries, you can see the use of social media are extremely restricted. But if you do it, you are going to be punished legally by the states. But here in Nigeria, where well, it's, it's free, nobody, nobody, nobody would decide. But the reality is that the religion has imposed certain things on you which are morally good. So it is your best interest not to violate all those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't have punishment for it here in Nigeria as you have it in, in Arab countries. But even, even in China, which is not our country, there is also a punishment. In fact, it's not even allowed. You can't even use social media in China, for example. Well, they have, because their, of the own, they have, they have their, their own, own versions yeah. of social but media. But the, 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 the version that they had is not as detrimental to the progress of society as it is today, we are where we are. There are positive things about social media. As a digital media person, I know, I know that there are certain positive things about it. Mm. But the negative aspect of it, of it is almost extrapolated to the extent that you know, it, 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 it becomes a, a challenge for all of us to manage. As we need to wind down, I wanted yeah. to find out from you, uh, what does Islam teach uh, mm. followers on how to hold the powerful accountable? No, that is why, that is, you know, I said the other, the other day, Allah says in the Quran that you as a leader, you are going to be accountable on the day of judgment. How well you have administered what has been given to you for the good of the people. And so that is why in Islam, in leadership in Islam, you do not necessarily go and ask for it because of the punishment you are going to get if you did not deliver for the good of the people. That's it's, for it's the leader. Right. I'm yes, talking about for the, for the follower. For the follower, what you should do, there, there, there is a verse of the Quran, Atiula or Ati Rasulu, that hearken to the voice of the leader, the prophet, then the constitutional authority. You must listen to them. You must follow them. You must obey them. That's what Islam says. But if they are erring? If they, that's what, if they, they, that's the, the onus is on the leaders not to err because if they know the consequences. But we know what happens in reality. No, no that is actually, if, but if they do know that this is the punishment they are going to get on the day of judgment, they call Yama the Kiyama, they are the most extremely careful on what they will do to the people. And so do not unnecessarily take over what belongs to the people mm. and you don't give it to them it's a sin 
and Allah Almighty, Allah Almighty Allah will punish you for that on the day of judgment. What is due to the people, give it to them at a point in time. In terms of wages, or salaries, or entitlements, do not hold anything back for the good of the people as a leader. But you as a follower, you must obey and respect your leaders. Because at the end of the day, leaders know that they will pay for any of their you know, misdemeanor no, at the end of the day. And that is why people who are, those who are Islamic leaders, when they have to come and lead, they weep because they know the consequences, the body on them. And so, but today, people don't care. I mean, they don't do anything, you know, that, and, and you, you begin to wonder, are they really Muslims? Do they understand what Islamic tennis says about leadership? And so it's, it behoves all of us. If you are going to be a leader, please go and read, go and read about what the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam did to the people of Mecca. What the caliphs did, go and read about them in terms of fairness to the people, in terms of being, doing justice to the people. At the end of the day, in terms of caring for the people, because you know that these are the burden you are going to carry on the day of judgment if you don't do it well. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Kashim Akiriti. as a deputy director, digital media, Voice of Nigeria, and the former chairman, NUJ Lagos Chapter. Thanks a lot, and once again, happy celebration. Thank you so much. Happy celebration. All right. So the three watchwords will be peace, unity, and love. So as you celebrate, remember that we all have to live together as one. But we're not done yet on the morning brief because we have more for you. Please stay with us.